The flora and fauna of the abandoned world of Parias has changed considerably since humanity left the planet to fend for itself five million years ago. During these five million years, a natural trend towards a warming climate is quite evident. The Arctic and Antarctic ice caps in this world have long since melted, with almost no place on the planet having year-round snowfall. Due to this warming trend, the seas rose and the climates changed significantly. When the seas rose, they drastically reshaped the supercontinent into something barely recognizable. Primarily, the western tip of this continent was the first to break away, becoming the long landmass of Lucindo. Lucindo split early, geologically speaking, being the first major isolated climate. To the east is what remains of the ancient supercontinent, with three major landmasses being connected by short land bridges. The first and arguably largest of these continents is Belkrik. This landmass exists on the south side of the Riftala Sea, the largest rift valley on the planet. Connected to Bell Creek by a thread is the peninsula of Nanuk on the west, and the large island of Haidar Og in the east. Connected by the Dizdoyatin land bridge is the continent of Kamna, with the Nayak Islands off its northern coast. In the north, connected to Kamna by the Ekul land bridge is Payax. Payax exists on the north side of the Riftala Sea, with many islands off the coast of this continent, especially on its southern end. The seas have changed considerably as well in the past five million years. The polar regions where the ice caps resided have been flooded into oblivion, being replaced by shallow seas. The Nutu Sea reaches around the far north and the Jawan Sea in the far south. There are considerable places of importance in the rest of the world's ocean, one of which is the Grinding Gulf. The Grinding Gulf can be found off of eastern Bell Creek and southern Kamna, and is significant due to high levels of tectonic activity in the region. This part of the world is plagued with earthquakes, tsunamis, and minor levels of volcanism. Another region is the Flamio Sea, which can be found off of the coast of Lucindo and has the highest levels of volcanism on the planet. In this part of Parias, undersea volcanoes can be seen barely poking out of the great ocean. The north holds the Mammon Sea, named for its protruding continental shelf that causes significant dry weather on the western side of Kamna. The continents aren't the only thing that has changed in this strange new world, but the climate has drastically changed as well. On Lucindo, a large rainforest and savanna stretches in the north, only stopped by a young mountain range. These mountains block rains to a large desert on the northwest of Lucindo. In the south, a small temperate band exists, giving way to a small and cold region in southern Lucindo. This place gets a solid amount of rain, with an exception to the flat plateaus of southwest Lucindo. Bell Creek also has a large tropical belt, with its fair share of jungles, savannas, and deserts alike. A gargantuan mountain range exists in the center of this land, dividing most of the tropics from the rest of the continent. The temperate region is the smallest in the world here. Ka'amna is generally one of the drier places on the planet, with a large desert in the center where rains don't fall. However, on the far east of this continent, the largest rainforest on the planet exists. Also, the Nayak Islands to the northeast are considerably colder and wetter than the rest of the rather hot continent, with these isles experiencing seasonal snowfall in the dead of winter. Payax is the least changed landmass in the last 5 million years when examining its climate. Most of the region is wet and temperate, with a subtropical strip of territory on the southern coast. Most of the land in this region is similar to the diversity of climates found in North America. Parias is a warmer world than that of Earth, but there are other factors to consider that make this world different than what we would consider normal. For starters, Parias is a smaller world, with a gravity of only 90% of that of Earth's. Despite the smaller gravity, the atmosphere is roughly 1.1 times that of Earth's, with a composition of 25% oxygen, 1% argon, 73.5% nitrogen, and 0.5% of other gases. 
Perias is a younger planet than that of Earth, and its young age can be seen in its faster day-night cycle, completing a rotation once every 21 Earth hours. Given its longer orbit around a binary star pair, one year on Perias consists of around 551 Earth days, or around 630 Perian days. Whilst the land and seas of Perias have changed a lot after humans abandoned the planet, the life left behind has also changed in this time, adapting to many niches that are vacant on this world. The next video will start to delve into the evolved species on Perias and how they have changed from their ancestors without the influence of their former caretakers. If you want early access to see future episodes, bloopers, and other benefits, join the Discord server. The link to the server can be found in the description and the pinned comment. I would like to thank Leah for helping me with Parias' globe model. She has her own speculative evolution project that I narrate, and if you want to check that out, the link to the Catafea video can be found in the description and the pinned comment. Also, I would like to thank you all for the 250 subscribers around the time of making this script. I'll ensure to make more content in the future, and I hope you all have a great day.